Hey you guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. It's such a gorgeous day out this morning, so I wanted to just walk around my garden, show you everything that's growing out here. It is gonna be like 70 degrees today. We have our seeds sprouting, we planted a bunch of new things, our blueberries doing good. We have a bunch of new plants on the floor here, germinating, and when you are starting to, you know, get into the hotter weather, bugs are going to start creeping around. You're going to start getting a little bit of fungus. We suffer from all kinds of fungus in the garden here. So you really want to make sure you start spraying your garden with like a anti-fungicide or anti-pesticide. I like to use neem oil in the garden just because it really helps to deter the pests away from your garden. And I also like to companion plant like my cottage garden. It's getting big and I can't wait to show you guys once it sprouts and we start getting flowers on her. Those are just basically a variety mix that's on the back of the cottage garden packet. If you look on there, you can see what it's growing. It's like baby's breath, um, California poppy, all kinds of great things. We have bees pollinating our blueberry over here, blackberry doing good. And um, I wanna take you guys inside because we have a bunch of seeds that are starting to sprout. Remember them seeds that we planted, them sunflowers the other day? Well, guess what? Check them out. I'm trying to do this video for you guys so you can see me and the pots at the same time. Check them out. They're sunflowers. The one didn't sprout yet, but it will. It's going to come up right there. <laughs> and then um, my eggplant didn't sprout yet, but it's going to. I know it is. We replanted some onions, so we're cutting and regrowing onions and celery from the store. I cleaned up my onions, so you don't want to cut the roots off or anything. What you want to do is get a really big container. Now, these onions are going to stink a little bit, so you want to make sure that um, you get a really good pot and you get really good potting soil in there and then just put them in the uh, some Some water a cup of water at first when the first night you're cleaning them cut the tops off save the tops wash them off Put them in a plastic baggie. Um, I'll do a video on that the next time I clean my onions So you guys can see how start to finish how we plant those and how they grow and they're gonna get huge We have great big onions back there um, That I had grown during the summer and these can be grown during the summer So now is the time you want to be getting your plants started outside rocking out and uh, our radishes are finishing up I planted our peppers out here a little bit. I got three pepper plants out here chilling with um some other morning glories that I planted. So we're gonna go in the lanai real quick, just show you what we did. So we transplanted a lot. We've got this um, oregano right here. You can see we repotted her. She looks a lot better and she's coming back. Doesn't she look a lot better from what she looked like in that tiny pot? And that is the magnificent result of transplanting your plants when they need it. They can get really choked out when um, they're in a tiny pot, just like this lemon bomb that we re-transplanted from the store. It was getting yellow, it was dying, and now it's just growing so big I can't even control the thing. We got our seed tray, so I had sowed some seeds in here, some peppers, some morning glories, eggplants, um, tomatoes, just a bunch of stuff that we're starting. I have to see what they are once they pop because I'm a type of gardener where I just throw seeds in there, start them, and then figure out what they are when they sprout and then plant whatever it is that I need to plant after. I am just so excited to get things in the ground. I just want to get things germinated. So we have our, um, these are the African daisies we sewed together kind of, I think that day. It was a few days ago, they're sprouting. And the other ones in the pot over there are sprouting as well. Our spinach is doing good. And then check this out guys, we got a raspberry from the store. So these raspberries come like this. They come in a little bag and that bag is filled with soil. It's like a peat moss type chunky soil. And um, they come in this little container here. Now raspberries are really tough to grow. So I'm gonna have to do some research on it. I've never grown raspberries. I've grown my blueberries, my sunshine blue hybrid bush variety blueberries. They're amazing. If you've never tried them, please try them. They are just so good to have. And they're such a vigorous plant. So they will survive in really cold climates as well. They do really good. And these raspberries right here, they, um, they're really tough to grow, but I'm gonna try them anyway. I love a good challenge. So you guys will be able to experience that with me and it's a plant for pollinators So I guess this one needs pollinators 
uh, and my, my blueberry doesn't. It's a self-pollinating plant, although they really benefit from those bees. That, you know, no matter if it's a self-pollinating, if it's a self-pollinating plant, you still gotta give it a little jiggle, you know? You might get a low pollination rate, and you might not get as much produce as you want if you're um, growing a self-pollinating plant indoors, because the bees really help that, and all the pollinators that are outdoors help that. So you might need, you know, some pollination techniques that you're using by shaking your plant once it's flowering. This is a raspberry, I made sure it was nice and healthy. The other ones were really dead and just uh, rotted off. So I got one with a nice bloom, and look, it's starting to bloom. I can't even believe that's blooming. So if you know why that's blooming, Paula, from Just Living, let me know. I know I just found out that you are a secret um, horticulturist so that's amazing I love that we have our seed sprouting our morning glories over here more with our sunflowers we just sowed the other day and everything's getting big we pot it up let me get around y'all <laughs> there's so much stuff going on in the garden we potted up this little guy my bromeliad you can see getting big this was little baby figured why not potted up our Christmas cactus that's doing good we watered it so that's chilling and our sage we're growing really pretty sage in the garden here you can see she's doing really well getting big and this was from the farmers market so if you go back to them them new plant videos i i posted where we got them new plants from the farmers market you'll see that that little gal what size pot she was in compared to what size pot she's in now you can see how well she's doing and that's like a small leaf variety sage. My big leaf variety is back there and we're gonna transplant that pineapple together. My pineapple back there, it has a double plant on it from the mother plant that kind of wilted out. Once a pineapple blooms, that bloom, um, you'll get that pineapple off of it, then the mother plant will eventually die. Before it dies, it'll push out two pups. One to two pups sometimes, you might get three, it depends, whatever the plant feels like pushing out, I guess. But uh, I got two pups on it so I like them in the pot the mother disintegrated now I have to kind of freshen up that soil any plants you have that are kind of in a big pot that you're not going to be planting for a while we transplanted this together you can see how big well this nephitis is getting it's getting out of control and it's because we freshened up that new soil we we repotted it when it needed it and has a lot of room to grow now if you're you have a plant that's been sitting in a pot for like a year or especially three years like my blueberry um that's going to be three years in this next year i'm going to have to pull that pot out cut any dead roots off and then freshen that soil up and add new soil add new nutrients and a fresh growing medium for that plant because after about two, three years, that soil is going to be spent. And if you're not adding compost in there or, you know, a good potting soil to begin with, you know, throughout that growing period, after my plant grows for a few months, every few months I like to top off with a good potting soil like that because it just freshens up that soil along with the nutrients I use. I like to spray all my plants. I like to spray guys real quick with a magnesium Epsom salt spray one to two tablespoons per gallon of water usually rainwater I use for my foliage because foliage spraying is amazing I love spraying the foliage on my plants and foliage if you don't know what that is it's just the leaves of your plant so any leaves is called foliage that is the foliage and you want to spray that because foliage feeding is really good for your plants they just grow a lot better I feel plus you want to put a pesticide in there like my neem oil I use to prevent bugs or you know any kind of fungus that's gonna happen during the summer because in the summer we get just a lot of bugs and diseases you'll see that here to come we're already getting hot weather just my succulents back here doing good guys i just wanted to share some things with you on what i was growing how everything's been doing um if you want to see anything specific let me know i love to share the garden with you if you need any help with anything let me know i'd love to help you in the best way possible we're going to have a lot of videos here to come from a couple of requests we got so stay tuned if you want to see them thank you so much for watching and stopping by see you guys next time i hope you enjoyed everything we're growing here i will show you updates and just step by step on what we do here i promise bye bye <laughs>